y'all. It's Mary Mancusi, author of The Camelot Code, and we are about to get started on another episode of the Once and Future Writers Club. Oh, the habits of my heart. Hopefully you all had a chance to watch last week's video, which was about world building. And that was about world building in a world that is similar or exactly like our own. Whether you take a real town or a fantasy town, whether you add vampires or go to the past, whatever. There's something about the world that is just like ours. Now today we're going to talk about creating an entire world from scratch. Like if you want to create a world that is vastly different than anything we've ever seen in the past, present, or future. Okay, so we're talking like Lord of the Rings, Narnia, you know, when they're in Narnia. Complete world built from scratch which is so much fun right I mean you get to play God you get to create everything but with great fun comes great responsibility because you have to create this world from scratch you're gonna be starting from zero which is a little bit scary but also completely awesome so today I'm gonna to introduce you to the building blocks that will help you create a world that is so rich and interesting and vibrant that your readers are gonna want to crawl in the page and, and live there um, but first we have our geek thing of the day. All right, this one is fabulous, you guys. I know I do a lot of dragon things, but of course I love dragons, and I hope all of you do too. I got this one from Dragon Con, and he's this little baby dragon that, like, can hang out on your wrist or around your neck. He's very bendy. Um, and he has like a little bit of armor on him as you can see and some of them actually glow in the dark I have this little guy. He is complete glowy, which is a thousand times more cool They also sell little cages that you can uh, display them in but I kind of like my dragons being free to fly around Woo! And that is my geek thing of the day all right, we've got that out of the way. Now we can concentrate on building our world. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the topography of your world. And that means a map. So my dream someday is to actually have a map in my book. I just think that would be the coolest thing ever. And most authors really, really want that. Now it doesn't always happen. Most publishers don't put the map in unless you have a really big fantasy. But that doesn't mean you can't create your own map. In fact, I think it's a good idea. When you're starting a world from scratch, you need to see what this world looks like physically. Is your world huge and spread out with different areas, mountains and rivers and oceans and deserts and grasslands? And are there, are there different towns in each one of those worlds? And are each of those towns completely miniature little civilizations with their own languages and rules and uh, governments and all that or is your world very small where everyone is like within a day's walk of each other and that's the only thing that they know is this tiny little universe also how do these physical features in your world affect the characters in your world so like people who live on the mountainside are gonna be very different than people who live on a desert island right desert island people probably use the ocean all the time to fish and, and swim and, and do all that kind of stuff maybe they get electricity using the water whatever and mountain people are going to be so much different they're going to be used to rugged terrain and harsh you know climates and uh, they're going to build their houses a certain way because of the winds that whip through the mountains and so you really have to have that physical sense of what your world looks like so draw a map it's so much fun and you don't have to be an expert map maker it can be really very simple my map would probably be simple I'm not such an artist uh, or you could go crazy and do something beautiful that you would be proud to put up on deviant art someday and say this is my world whatever works as long as you get that sense of what your world looks like physically okay because that's gonna make a big difference in your story um, the second thing is you have to start creating your societies. You, I assume that the person in your world is part of some society, or perhaps they are a outcast from your society, but you have to have that society and, and tell us what it is like. So for example, most societies have some kind of political system, whether it's a king and queen, a council, a government. You have to decide what this government is gonna look like and how those rules affect their people. So do you have a benevolent king and queen who you know allow everyone the freedom to do whatever they want? want or do you have a very strong dictator who you know suppresses the people or or puts them to work for him you know taxes them beyond their limit that makes a big difference in your world most societies also have some sort of religion now that doesn't have to play a prominent part in your book it just depends on what your story is but you should at least imagine what the people believe in um, do they have a deity that they worship do they have more than one is there like a god for everything that happens in their life a god of rain a god of you know sunshine or whatever Maybe they worship technology. Maybe they worship a flying spaghetti monster. Whatever it is, it's up to you. Remember, this is your world. You get to make these rules. 
Now that you have the big picture here, the government and the religion, now we have to go to the nitty gritty. What are people's lives like? What kind of dwellings do they live in, for example? Do they live in like simple mud huts? Do they have lumber? Do they live in castles? Who lives in the castles? Is it just the nobility or is everyone welcome in the castle? How is wealth distributed? Are there a lot of really rich people, a lot of really poor people? Is there a middle class or is it all the haves and the haves not? And for that matter, how does money work? Is there a barter system? Uh, do they trade with other areas? Is there problems ever with that kind of trade? You know, does everyone trade willingly? Are there certain areas that have a lot of really important supplies? Like, you know, one area has all the sheep that they need for the wool for their clothing. And one area has all the fish they need to eat. And do they trade those kind of things back and forth? You basically have to create an entire economic system for your world. Otherwise, your world is gonna feel very flat. Another fun thing that you can play with is what people wear and get really creative with this. You don't have to just have them wear the simple expected kind of medieval garb for a fantasy world or whatever. You're building this world from scratch. You can do anything you want. And if you create a society where like purple polka dots and orange stripes is the hotness in their like fashion shows, that's totally fine. So a fun activity would be to go on Pinterest and create a Pinterest board for your characters and find pictures, find drawings on DeviantArt, go just scour the internet and find images that remind you of the people that you want to place in your book and pin them all up in Pinterest. And then as you're writing your book, you have a visual representation of what people look like. All right, next up we have technology. And by technology, I don't necessarily mean like, do they have iPads? Um, where are they in the level of technology? You know, do they have running water? Do they have indoor plumbing? Are they completely a rural society that has not invented any of these things and barely has like the wheel and fire? Or are they a really advanced society uh, like Wakanda in uh, Black Panther? And of course, we got to talk about magic, right? Uh, if you are creating a world of your own, a lot of times people want to include some kind of magic. And you're not required to have magic in your story, but I know a lot of you are going to want to have that. So let's talk about what you need if you do introduce magic. First of all, magic needs to have rules. Magic needs to have limits. You can't just be casting random spells all over the place with no rhyme or reason. That would be a boring story. If every problem could be easily solved by someone just casting a spell with no consequence, that is not a very interesting story. It's better if your magic has limits. In fact, magic could be a big problem in the story. Like it helps you a lot, but it also hurts you. So for example, let's say in a lot of video games, they have something called mana. And as you're playing your game, you have a certain amount of mana to start out with. And as you cast a spell, it drains your mana. And when you have no mana left, then you can't cast any spells. That is the consequence of using your magic. You run out and then you can't do it anymore. That is the limit. And those are really important in a story. So a lot of times you might see a magic user in a story get a really bad headache after they cast magic or they get really weak. Um, I would th try to think of something beyond that that is pretty overdone at this point. You know, I mean, you can include that, but I would love to see something a little more original of like what happens. Like maybe um, every time someone casts magic, their nose grows. I mean, that's stupid, right? That's a dumb thing. But something Something that's unexpected and interesting will add to your story. Also try to think about how magic fits into the world that you've created. If you have a group of people that at birth can cast fire spells, you're probably going to have a big fire department in town, right? Because there's going to be accidental baby fires all over the place, right? So those are a few things you want to keep in mind when creating your world. There are so many more, but I wanted to switch gears right now and talk about how you introduce your world in the story because I think this is where a lot of new writers really mess up. The first thing is the dreaded info dump where you just regurgitate everything that you've decided about your world onto the first page of your manuscript or in the first chapter. Just because you know everything about this world does not mean you need to share it with the reader right from the start. Imagine if you picked up a book and it's like, oh, and here's the entire history of the world we're going to read about. Um, told as if it were a nonfiction history book. That would be so boring. And you do not want to bore your readers on the first page because you will never get them to the second page. I would instead weave in the important parts of the world that they need to know at that moment. And then further on the story, introduce a little more. The next thing I want to say is show, don't tell. I don't know how many manuscripts I've read from newbie writers where it's basically like the characters having a conversation that discuss the history of their world. Like, oh, it is cold outside today. Yes, well, a thousand years ago, King Troganov cast an ice curse on the land and only the precious chosen one can reverse it. 
I wonder if she will ever come. Well, and it would go on from there. And you're basically just throwing the story at the reader in a conversation between two characters who should already both know this. So they're actually trying to inform the reader, not each other, because they already know. And that seems very unnatural. So try to weave the story in more organically. Give the reader what they need to know, when they need to know it, and do not give them too much too early, or you will scare them off and bore them to death. The other thing I would suggest is to use all the senses when describing your world. We want to hear the world, we want to smell the world, we want to taste the world. So when you're creating your descriptions of your world, give us all the visuals, yes, but also give us the rest of the senses. Make it come alive. We hear the wind whispering through the trees and at some point we smell the fragrant scent of roses from the king's garden or whatever it is. You know, weave those full body descriptions because they enrich your story and will make it better. So, and this kind of goes with the don't info dump, is I would suggest you drop your reader right into the world right away. The action, we want the conflict, we want the story right from the very first page. So drop the character into the world, have them do something, and through whatever they're doing, explore their world. You know, immerse them in this world and make it a part of what they're doing and who they are. And then we will get a better sense of the world through the eyes of the character. And that's another thing. You have to decide if your character is a fish out of water, as in he is not familiar with his world, and so when he sees stuff, it's new, just like it's new to the reader. Or if they are already very accustomed to their world, they're going to look at it very differently. It may not be surprising to see a big castle, so they don't have to give a three-page long description of the beautiful castle because they walk by it every day to work, so it's not that exciting to them. Try to keep in mind who is telling the story and how they would describe your world. Like in Camelot Code, you know, Arthur comes to our time and he's blown away by things like technology and indoor plumbing so when he describes our world it seems miraculous and fascinating like a toilet is awesome and for Stu and Sophie they take for granted that there's going to be a toilet in the bathroom right that's just obvious to them so they wouldn't like sing the praises of a toilet as they walked into the bathroom the other thing you have to do is be careful of dialogue. So you're probably going to write your book in English. And if you do, then your characters are going to speak English. You don't want to be like Tolkien in Lord of the Rings and create an entire elven language, I don't think. I mean, if you do, more power to you. It's a little hard to digest, though, as the reader. They probably want most words to be understandable as they're reading them. That said, you can give your characters some kind of slang, right? You can create words that mean the similar things to our words uh, that characters might say in their world. And that kind of adds a richness to your story, too. It makes it a little more in-depth. It's almost like they're speaking another language, but you're just hinting at it instead of full out doing it to make the reader not understand. And be very careful that they don't use our slang or speak in a very similar way to us uh, in modern day because it's gonna feel a little jarring. At the same time, don't go so crazy with the thous and the these and the formal languages uh, that it becomes very stilted and awkward to read. You wanna kinda get in between that and create something that's easy to read but very distinctively from this world. Okay, so now you have this great, beautiful, complex, interesting world. Do not be afraid to throw a wrench in it, okay? This is just your starting world. If your story is gonna be interesting, you need conflict, you need disasters, you need something crazy to happen in your world that will shape your character's journey through it. So while your world can start off as the status quo, this is how it is right now, it should not end up that way. Whether it's revolt or apocalypse or plague or zombies or whatever it is, don't be afraid to mess things up because it only makes your story more interesting. All right, I think that covers it. I know we kind of sped through it, and I know there's so many things to think about when building a world, but though hopefully that will give you a few nuggets to get started. And if you go to the worksheet again down the bottom that I'm going to link, it will give you some more ideas of things you need to think about when creating your world. And I can't wait to hear about the worlds that you do create and how they come alive to both you and eventually your readers. It's the most fascinating, interesting thing that a writer can do is to build this entire world Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful. I will be back next week with another episode of the Once and Future Writers Club. Oh, the habits of my heart. I